The one thing you gotta remember is at the weigh-ins, Edwards very dismissive of Severoski. Got in his face, was pretty disrespectful up there. Now he's got a chance to back it up. What's your reaction when you see a guy carry himself that way? They're either really secure or really insecure. It's one or the other. Fighters put pressure on themselves. I mean, that's yeah. what a lot of people don't understand. I mean, there's media pressure, there's pressure on the outside the fence. But you put pressure on yourself with how you behave outside of the cage. Increase the stakes either way. An example of a guy who uses his reach extremely well, and maybe someone who doesn't. Someone who uses his reach extremely well. Well, let's go for a guy who got hurt tonight, supposed to be on this card. MVP has a great understanding of rage, great with his lead tools. He knows exactly where his opponent is. I would say Liam McGeary is an example of a guy who doesn't do it well because he likes to brawl so much. He tends to step forward and negate his own reach advantage. He doesn't make fighters come to him. Kendall Grove. Kendall Grove, once again, such a brawler that he doesn't use his range of fitness. His last, his last couple fights, he's been much better with that. We saw against Joey Beltran, he looked like a boxer using that lead jab. But for a lot of his career, I want to move forward and bang, even though I'm 6'6", six, six, and guys can't get to it. Wow. And you lose it. Man, Edwards, so far, backing up the disrespect. Doing a great job. Zavrosky, no, no answer right now for the range attack of Edwards. Great stuff on the feet from him. Vivian Edwards is 24 years old. Zabrowski late to the sport. Why Zabrowski hasn't really sold out for a takedown yet? Dove in for that double leg, tried to get the body lock. He's here at the outside, he's getting teed off on. Keep pressing forward. If he rushes in, the knee is there. Hey, the knee is there. Right, if he rushes in, the knee is there. Pressing forward. Speaking of And there's, he's rushing in. Once again, surprised he didn't do that earlier, but he knew he'd do it eventually. That's where that powerful build helps him. So disappointing when Michael Vernon Page got hurt because that was such an intriguing yeah. matchup. And there were a lot of people starting to climb on that. Well, this would be the first boss bandwagon. Derek Anderson could be that guy because of the style. Incredibly dangerous. Oh, look at that by Edwards holding the wrist and landing the knee. Don't see that that off. This is target wow. practice. Good night. That was spectacular. Your baby and Edward says, you don't know, now you know. You're probably sick of us saying this at home, but 185 wide open, dangerous strikers in that division. Plenty of room for this guy, I'm telling you right now. That's a great performance. We have an opportunity on this stage to make a statement. You can't make it any louder than Fabian Edwards just did. Everybody loves the jump knee. Everybody loves a knockout like this. It was the idea that it was set up with great punching and kicking combinations. That's what stands out to me. Held the wrist, landing the knees here. At this point, Sevrosky is just oh. in desperation mode right here, moving straight backwards. Right there, that is all she wrote. You heard the crowd gasping at the replay. Remember, Jimmy, bang, earlier in the round, the coaches say if he starts to come in, the knee is there, the knee is there. And this time, he caught a guy who was going backward. Look at this here, bang. Set it up beautifully, eyes wide shut. That's how you land a flying knee, my friend.
Real time. Oh. That sounded like two coconuts coming together. And we are underway. What a week for MMA in this country. And what a start, potentially, to our Channel 5 card here. Look for Fabian to set up that inside leg kick or inside body kick, that back leg to the body or to the inside leg of Lee Chadwick. He also likes to go ahead and right after the kick, throw that straight left or throw the straight left first, then finish up with the kick. That'll keep Chadwick guessing on what he's going to do with the stand up. Hiding out of that languid southpaw stance, Fabian Edwards as Chadwick tries to close the distance. This is not where Fabian wants to be early in the fight. This is where Chadwick wants the whole fight to be. He wants the fight to be either where he's, where Fabian's on the bottom, underneath him, getting ground and pounded on, or he wants to press against the fence so he could take away, uh, take away from that explosion of uh, Fabian. Chadwick thinks that his experience will be key. I would normally agree with you when I hear that, but the issue is, is that his brother, Leon, has plenty of experience and you have when you have a brother like that that's guiding you along and you understand what what the sport is about i don't think there's anything that lee's gonna bring that fabian is already prepared for Wants to extricate himself from that minor problem and again just looking to find his range to look for distance to maybe throw that jab Finished his last contest against Claudio Conti with a real attention-grabbing kick to the body, Fabian Edwards. He is capable of the spectacular. The problem is, though, at a young age, young in your career, you've had spectacular finishes, and you continue to think that it's going to happen. And we saw earlier with Wallhead that not every fight works out that way. The bright lights, Bellator, it just, it doesn't always plan out. I'm not saying that's not going to happen. What I'm saying, though, is that you can't always look for it. You got to just let it develop in front of you. And that's sometimes what young fighters have a hard time dealing with. They always try to make it happen, and sometimes it costs them the fight. The problem with Josh, he's a realist. There's oh, that kick from Edwards. Once again, he pulls it off, and Chadwick responding with a left hook that got Edwards' attention, but again the kick. Moments of brilliance there from Edwards, who now Beautiful. knows how to take that. Nice work, that was a great transition. He had rocked him, stumbled him a little bit. Was able to get the takedown. Now he needs to make some space, start doing some ground and pound. Nice job. That was a nice setup on the head kick. He stepped out, stepped back into range and threw it fluidly. It just flowed right off the ground and right up to the head. Now just remember, when people block with these gloves, this isn't like blocking with kickboxing gloves. This is like blocking with your four ounce gloves. It's like just blocking with your normal hand. So if I throw all my body weight behind you, and someone like Fabian Edwards has a tree trunk of a leg, okay, and it's, the body weight of it all is gonna go, go up to the head and gonna be able to punch or kick through that. So that's what you saw right there. Chadwick blocked the kick, and then Fabian was able to go to it again. He kind of semi-blocked it, but you could tell he was wobbled and hurt. Touch a cat and mouse here. This is good. People are booing, but this is ink. This is good for him. It's actually good for Chadwick to recover and get his bearings about him, but it's also good for Fabian to kind of to kind of settle in a little bit, get his win, and let him understand that the fight resets when it gets back to the feet. It was real cage IQ there from Fabian Edwards. He must have been tempted to rush in, but instead of that, he took his time. Look for him to set that, that head kick up later in the fight as well. What he'll potentially do is maybe go to the body with a body kick on that side, maybe go to the low-level low leg kick, and then later on in the fight, or later, probably not in this round because we're at a minute left, but maybe into the second round, he may go back up top to the head. Chadwick not short of confidence. He's won three in a do? row after a 2016 defeat, and that just shaken a little bit here, I think. What you, what fight, what, what smart fighters will do is they'll capital and they realize something they were able to capitalize on in the first round. They'll go back to the money bank later on and say, hey, I'm going to pull that one back out and see what happens. It's a lot like I'm sure what they do in, you know, in uh, cricket, I don't know, it's <laughs> in football here. Josh's staggering knowledge of sport in the UK <laughs> after a few days here. He'll learn. Chadwick needs to get, get back into pressing him to the fence, not stay in that range where Fabian can jump in and jump out. It's been a good opening round here for Edwards. 
Not by any means a conclusive one, but he's had plenty of success. Got to be careful, that was a big straight knee up the, up the gut. Plenty to look back on from that opening round. Remember, Fabian Edwards has never gone beyond round two as a pro. Lordingus pro fight was 5.44. He's probably going to go beyond that unless something dramatic happens, but that's the process, okay, yeah, isn't it, John? I think this is good for him to get into the later round. We're going to see exactly what he can do. Beautiful head kick, as you're seeing here, and he followed up with some good punches. The only thing he did wrong there, he kind of smothered. You see those last little punches. You see it all the time. You see it all the time with boxers. Boxers, they end up, they get carried away, and they smother their punches sometimes. You got to make a little bit of space so your punches can land clean. But then as he realized he couldn't get, he couldn't get the clean shots in anymore, he made space, shot the takedown. Chadwick, I think, was believing that he was going to start striking and punching again. Beautiful job. That solidified him the round, knowing that he was able to get, get the wobble, then get the takedown. Nice job. Chadwick just needs to be more aggressive in this round, as in not staying in that range, in that, po out in that pocket, unless he's throwing or pressing him, uh, Fabian to the fence. Well, Chadwick said beforehand that it's about levels, which of course it is, any fight sport is. And uh, maybe Edwards hadn't dealt with anyone from his level before. Nice job there, that's exactly what I see he needed to do. I think he went back to his corner and they told him exactly what needed to be happen if he wanted to win this fight. Nice work. Nice mount return, gets a lift, takes him down. He should have jumped, in, or not jumped, but trying to slid his way himself back up. Beautiful elbows. It's a brilliant recovery, isn't it, from Edwards? Nice job. Made enough space by framing him away with his forearm. He was able to land those elbows. Those were clean, too. You can see Chadwick's legs kind of buckle a little bit. Almost just saying to Chadwick, I can take anything you've got, any plan you've got, and I can respond and put you under pressure. This is where he doesn't want to be. See how he doesn't want to be in that range where he's in the pocket but not throwing. He's also got to be careful just rushing in with his head down. He cut over the right eye there of Chadwick. He's on the edge of the eye though, so might not bother him too much. Chadwick's one of those gritty fighters though. Is the, is the, the more blood, the harder he fights and the better he fights. And as you can see from the tattoo there, he's known as the Butcher, and somehow it really suits him. <laughs> They're both just pummeling for position. What I mean by pummeling is they're jockeying for hand position. The idea is to get two underhooks. So Fabian here looks like he has the two underhooks. You're able to elevate their elbows so you can throw the knees right up into the, to the solar plex. Such a contrast in styles here in body shapes. This is not where Chadwick wants to be in that pocket. See, he's right there in that pocket where Fabian can get off. He's either got to throw or get out of the range. He's trying the inside leg kick there, and the sort of thing he's got to do, anything he can to disrupt Edwards here. Well, this is already uh, Fabian's longest fight. <laughs> so, I mean, this is what these are the questions that I wanted answered. I wanted to know how he would perform as the fight went on. Everything he's done has been finished in the first round. 44 seconds into the second round is nothing. Came out fresh, you know, ready to be explosive again. But can he do it late in the second round? What's he going to be like in the third round? These are all questions that need to be answered when you're talking about a young talent like Fabian Edwards. Getting towards the part of the fight that Chadwick wanted to be in. Can he make a dent in Fabian Edwards? Looking at that jab. He's going to have a hard time making a dent unless he pushes the pace a little bit more. He's got to get up in his grill and just start getting after him. He's not going to get anything done out here. Fabian Edwards is too fast for him, too explosive. By the time that Fabian reacts and he comes back, Chadwick's going to end up missing, or, missing the strikes. He's very wary of getting into range, isn't he, Chadwick? He's fighting a cautious fight right now. That's because he understands the explosiveness, the explosiveness of uh, Fabian. He felt the power of that kick as well. Knows what Edwards can do. Edwards renowned for his patience. Fighter from Birmingham, from Team Renegade. And now he lets his hands go as 
Chadwick gets up close. Chadwick doing a good job on that. Nice turn by Fabian as well. Notice how he's working on those dumb underhooks like I was talking about earlier. Now they both, uh, I believe he has, both of them have over-unders. One is overhooked, one is underhooked. Chadwick with good head position there, dropping down on the leg. I'll continue to say this. The sport has evolved so much. When it first started, guys used to take him down against the fence and just grind him out and just do heavy ground and pound and damage. The sport has evolved to the point where now people use the cage as a place to rest and relax and hang out. So now, if I was Chadwick, I'd be trying to pull him away from the fence so he can't use that fence as a third leg. And that, that third leg, all that's gonna do is help him keep his balance, help him stay on his feet. And that's not where Chadwick wants this fight to stay. And just that short left hand there from Fabian Edwards. He used the elbows last time, he used the left hand that time. Similar result. Gets himself away from that position. And not too many people thought this would go this far. In a way, Chadwick has confounded expectation, but Edwards, you feel, still in front in the fight. A little frustrated, I think, as he turned back there, Fabian Edwards, but he's learning and he's doing fine, Josh. He's young. This is what I was talking about. You know what? Honestly, I'm, I'm actually really happy he's fighting with some composure. The sky's the limit for this guy. After, if he gets this win today, he has all the ability. He's not showing any wears and tears. He doesn't look extremely exhausted right now. I'm sure, he looks tired. He's a fighter. He's a fighter that went. They went three rounds, or he went through two rounds. He's never done that before. Let him realize that, that, okay, I can do this. In this third round, he understands that in five minutes, I'll be done. He can do anything for five minutes. He's trained countless hours to do this. Chadwick just needs to get after it more. He's, I feel like he's lost both rounds. That last round was close, though. It was close. First round for sure went to uh, Fabian Edwards. And the point is, you can never be sure. Edwards wants encouragement from the crowd, many of whom, I think, are on the side of the man from Liverpool, Lee Chadwick. Owns two gyms in the city, successful businessman, but wants to continue to make a go of this huge experience and really in the spotlight here tonight. And he's going to give it everything in this final round. It's a mental barrier for Fabian Edwards to get past that, that point that he's never been before. Now that he knows he's in the third round, in five minutes, he can do anything for five minutes. He's trained for this. He's trained countless hours for this. He knows and understands that, look, I can do this. You can see him. He's pretty light on his feet right now. It's not like he's slothing around the ring or around the cage. Okay, he understands that. He, I'm, I'm fresh. He gets it. So he, I think mentally, it was a barrier that he broke through. And you're going to start to see him open up a little bit more in this third round. Chadwick just needs to get after it. He has, you don't know if the second round went to him. The first round for sure didn't go to him. He needs to get, get in Fabian's grill and make him fight. Make it a tough and gritty fight. Oh, another head kick. I told you to go back to that. But Chadwick comes back with a beautiful left hook. Edwards followed up the head kick with a left hand as well. Again, they press onto the cage, and can Chadwick make something happen from this kind of position? They've been doing a good job with the double unders. Here we go with the double unders again. He's stopping him from dropping down on the legs. That helps open up the knees. What I like about Fabian is when he tries to break, he breaks with the knee, so he knees hard and he makes space and gets away. Nice work, he's got good head positioning here. There's that knee. Nice Another good again. knee, wasn't it, to the body? And beautiful takedown. This is, I think this is a good chance for Fabian just to grind out this fight, put some wear and tear on him, and maybe posture up and do some real damage. Followed his debut with submission wins against Aaron Kennedy, Lewis King, Kent Cavanagh. He's very, very comfortable on the floor, Fabian Edwards, for all the show-stopping... Uh, Finishes against Conti, for example. 
You see his brother there in the background coaching him. It's nice sometimes to get the takedown in your own corner. Okay, then you understand this. Look, the rest of the fight, Lee Chadwick can't hear his corner because they're all the way on the other side of the cage. So, listening to his brother, give him instructions on what to do. Roll them to the other side. Beautiful back take. That's something that we haven't seen from him because his fights haven't lasted too long. Nice job. Roll to the top. Transition beautifully to the mount. These are all these are all questions that we need an answer to. We're getting answers right now. He can be a gritty, tough fighter when he needs to be. Got himself into a great position here. Baby and Edwards. You think about it. Baby and Edwards is here. He's 5-0. He's fighting Lee Chadwick, who's 24, 13, and 1. Talk about the experience difference, and he's fighting like he's a seasoned veteran. Into the final two minutes of the fight. This is about a young prospect just grinding his way to the end, getting the job done, and understanding that it can't always be spectacular. It's going to be hard for Lee to get out of this position Fabian's got that body triangle, which is a figure four around the legs. It's hard to move. There's no around the waist. It's hard to move. It's hard to turn side to side. If Fabian can actually get Lee Chowick or Chowick to the to go belly down, could lay him flat and start doing some heavy strikes or go for the choke. He's having a hard time controlling that position, but he's got that nice body triangle. Lee Chowick's not going anywhere right now. He's looking for the choke, isn't he? Chadwick's got good wrist control right here. See how he's kind of controlling the wrist? There he goes, now he pummels his arm over the top. It, what I mean by the choking side, and I'm gonna tell you, is Fabian wants to roll him to the choking side. So see how he has the left arm? He wants to roll him now to the left side so he can try to finish the choke there. It's gonna be hard for him to finish that choke from that side. Desperate there, now he's on the choking Chadwick. side. So if Fabian's able to choke on that with that right arm, It'd be hard for Chadwick to roll to the other side and start defending. Into the final 30 seconds, there's the defense from Chadwick. Desperately trying to get himself into any kind of position. There he goes, belly, he's trying to get him to go belly down. Couldn't get him to go there just yet. A little smile to his corner there from Edwards. This Mugging was for the camera's job, he thinks is done. Huge step up in competition, good, gritty fight for him. This is exactly what we needed to see from him today. We needed to see if he could go the full three rounds with someone who's a seasoned veteran, experienced, someone who knew how to win fights, someone who had to press someone against the fence. How would he deal with the adversity as, it got, as the fight went on? That mental barrier needed to be broken today, and it was, and look at him, look at him. He's not even breathing heavy. Felt comfortable, he looked good. You know, obviously, we all want the knockout. Don't we all? But uh, it doesn't always happen, and this was the day. Ladies and gentlemen, having gone the distance, we'll go to your three judges at cage side. Your first judge, Brian Miner, scores the fight 30 to 26. While judges Eric Colon and Dave Torelli both see the fight the same, 30, 27. I'll have it for the winner by unanimous decision, Fabian, the assassin, Edward. Well, what a way to kick things off here in Newcastle. A big win there for Fabian Edwards, which makes him 6-0, and oh, and on he marches. Nine of Falco Neto's 11 wins have come. Nine knockout or submission, seven in round one, but Edwards has got the job done early as well on all bar two occasions in round one. And he's got this lovely, long-limbed, languid style. David's got to be careful not to try to, do, try to do too much so early in the fight. While Neto is still fresh, obviously possesses a lot of power, physically is strong, let the fight develop in front of him. His skills are enough to beat Neto. He's just got to make sure that he uses all of them. Neto looking for that single leg. Good wrestling skills, this guy. Excellent jiu-jitsu, of course.
Maybe doing a good job of lifting up on the, the underhook. Trying to wizard down on him. Making himself heavy so Neto can't get the takedown. He gains his feet there and look for the knee and then look for the left hand, Edwards. Through that little inside chopping elbow that just missed. As Josh pointed out, you can clearly see it from his physique. Falco Neto is a strong man. And this is the kind of position that he wants to be in. I don't think Fabian Edwards is a weak man, though. <laughs> nice assist to the Kimura. We try to roll him through. This may put him in a position where he can end up on bottom. Not the position you really want to be with, with Neto. though. Yeah, strong man, and he's on top now. He's got a really good position. See those what, elbows to the body. What happened there was he went for the roll through. He put the foot between the legs and tried to roll through the Kimura, and the cage got in the way, and he wasn't able to scramble or finish the, the technique. See how Neto is trying to take as much advantage of this as he can. With the elbows, he was using the knee as well as Edwards tries to escape. He tried attacking that armbar from that position. Fabian doing some good stuff. There we go. Back up to the feet. Exactly where Edwards wants to be, and he launches that kick to the head. And then the knee from Edwards. This is what they came to see. I'd like to see Fabian Edwards cause, cut a couple angles, cut a little bit in the corners. Don't let it, don't stand directly in front of it because I feel like that's how Neto's able to close the distance real easily and get to the takedown, or at least to the clinch. There's that power from Neto again. Edwards defending the attempted elbow there from Falco Neto. Fabian's looking to try and get that underhook on the right side. He's using that knee to kind of keep the distance a little bit so maybe he can push him back, try to get back to his feet. That knee is like a little bit of a knee shield. So Neto can't pass. Oh, no, watch those up kicks. Oh, that is sensational for me. Stunning stoppage. Unbelievable. Just when I was thinking that he was on his back and it's not a position you want to be with Neto. Beautiful up kick. What I didn't understand was Neto came back in. After he stepped in, he stepped right back into another one. I think the phrase is never knew what hit him. Yeah, but all the controversy that we had at the weigh-ins with the pushing and grabbing, it's great to see the two of them talking with each other. He owns it, doesn't he? Fabian Edwards. This is his theatre. These are his people. And here, Josh, for those who missed it, here it is again. Baby with the up kick, but then he steps right back in and gets two, two more after the first one, and the shots finish. I would have thought after the first up kick, he would have stepped back and maybe tried to kick the legs, get his head back underneath him, get his legs underneath him, get his wit back about him. Beautiful. That one wasn't as hard. Maybe boom, but there, back away. Nice job. Then Fabian quickly up to his feet, right with the combinations, didn't rush it, pick and choose his shots. Straight left, little right, nice work. Set more tests, and he found answers to them. And Neto is fine, but still just coming to his senses, I think. He's a tough guy. But he does go to 7-0, as everyone expected Edwards, but I don't think too many people 
would have predicted him to do it like that. Bellator know they've got a real star in this guy. And as they continue to try and build him, he continues to respond. Now we can head to the cage to Michael and just make it official. Ladies and gentlemen, it comes to an end officially. Three minutes, 51 seconds into round number one. The winner by TK Hall, Birmingham's Larry Horn, Fabian, the Assassin Edwards. Round number one, and we are underway. Red gloves for Fabian Edwards, blue gloves for Jonathan Osuku. John mentioned five fight win streak for the 23 year old. Finishes in six of his last seven for seven and all. Fabian Edwards. Edwards in the red gloves, Bosuku in the blue gloves. Nice heavy left kick by Bosuku. He needs to take it to be smart about where if he's going to throw that kick. Where it lands. Watch out! Oh. Surge here early by Edwards. Looking for a little bit of a knee. And Bosuku able to recover. And landed a good elbow on his exit. Bosuku lost his first three professional fights, but he is seven and one since that point. So he is definitely worthy of this fight tonight against Fabian Edwards. Well, you're looking at a guy on the job experience because he didn't yeah. have an amateur record. So he went in there without having the ability to test things out, to learn. He had to learn on the fly. And he's got into a rhythm where he is landing big, heavy shots on his opponent. He is erratic in the way he does some things, which throws guys off. And a guy like a Fabian Edwards, who's very technical in how he attacks his opponents usually, Sometimes when you're fighting that awkward guy, it kind of throws you off. It takes you a while to figure him out. The growth of MMA in France continues, but certainly not like it is in some other countries. Czech Congo talked about that for many years. And that's why Czech's been in the U.S. for a long time. Exactly. But you look at, you know, France has got great athletes. Look at their soccer team. Look at some of the people coming there. And their MMA pro their program, it's behind the times, and that's why you have guys like Czech who live in the U.S. And, you know, he comes back to Paris all the time, but when he trains, oh, oh boy, yeah. head kick. Beautiful head kick by Fabian. And, and you cannot take many of those. You see Basuka, he's blocking with one hand, one arm. But you can't do that when you have a heavy kicker. You've got to bring that other one to check it off. Almost a Dutch block. It'll go right through the glove. It will, and it'll... It'll go right through your arm, breaking your arm in half. You've got to take some of that speed and torque off of it. Speaking of broken arms due to kicks, happy birthday to the natural Randy Couture. <laughs> That's true. That wasn't the nicest segue, but well, happy birthday to one of the best of all time. That was a little four segue. That was very good. That was nice. Fight against Gabriel Gonzaga. Yes, indeed. Retained his heavyweight title. Yeah, I was going to say, and yeah, he won. Yeah. I like the fact that Pazuko is, he's not giving an inch. He is still marching down. He's not, he's not in any way impressed by Fabian Edwards and what he's doing as far as saying, well, I'm just, gonna, I'm just in here to try to look good. He's taking big shots. He's got a chin. He's here to fight. Fabian Edwards said, and I quote, I will be the Bellator middleweight champion by mid-2020. Said I'm ready to challenge right now, but I'm going to build my fan base and take my time. And with his brother's success, they could turn out to be an incredible duo in MMA, maybe the best of all time. His brother is an outstanding welterweight fighter. He picked apart Cowboy Cerrone yes. in the fight. And he, look at he is just flat out good. Leon, 17 and 3, seven straight wins. And then the, the, the whole thing is his brother Fabian is just a bigger version. 
moved to England from Jamaica, where he was born at age nine. What you're seeing is you're seeing Fabian, the re reason he's being successful with what he's doing. Right now, he's able to control the distance on this fight. Kosuka is coming forward, and he's trying to throw those big shots. But Fabian is seeing when he's bringing that attack. He's controlling the distance, letting him bring that attack at times, and then just countering off and closing that distance and landing big shots. Final seconds of round number one. Kicks thrown, some partially landed. The fight will continue. Every now and then, just go inside as well, you know what I mean? It's low and high, low and high, yeah? Go inside, oh, let your head kick. Take, mix them up. Let get a proper down. One round in the books. Fabian Edwards in the red. Jonathan Bosuku in the blue. John, how'd you score? No, no doubt that's a 10-9 round for Fabian Edwards. He outstruck Bosuku. Bosuku's trying it. He, he's coming after him. He's pressuring him. And you're seeing that Fabian Edwards is able to control that distance and land beautiful strikes when he wants. The Southpaw, born in Kingston, Jamaica, fighting out of Birmingham. Good slip of the head by Jonathan Bosuku. That hand hit him still, that straight left. He's got to start moving his feet. His feet are kind of flat, dead. You know, he's keeping his head on that center line. He needs to think about either, I've got to move my head again. One, two, right down the pipe. You're gonna see Fabian Edwards start going, I think if just starting to pick apart, he's gonna start going low high with his kicks, with his hands. He's gonna start to try to confuse Bosuku, and then he's gonna go for the big shot. That's what I'm talking about, going to the body, low with that straight left hand. Why do I feel a head kick coming? <laughs> exactly, because it's being set up. <laughs> you know, and it's so true, people think that these things just happen. No, they don't just happen. Fighters make them happen by, by doing things that create a situation and a reaction that they expect. And when they see that reaction, they launch and it lands. Osuku definitely game tonight. Trying to close the distance continuously to negate that reach advantage. Switch of the stance, nice quick inside leg kick, answered by a kick. But the Another beautiful left hand straight again, left. Left hand, that southpaw with a straight left against the orthodox fighter. Or vice versa. Well, as you're watching, you know, Basuka with his left hand, look at how many times his left hand comes out as just a pawing motion instead of it coming and snapping towards Fabian Edwards with his feet moving his body close so that left hand touches that chin. You've got to have attacks. If you keep on doing a repetitive motion, your opponent's going to take that repetitive motion and start to make it work against you. Again, he connects with the left midway point of this three-round fight. 7-0. Fabian Edwards looking to move the 4-0 inside the Bellator cage. Fabian Edwards right now, that left hand's got a, a homing beacon right in the middle of sure Jonathan Masuka's face. He is landing a stiff left hand anytime he wants, both to the body or upstairs on Jonathan Masuka. Good combination by Jonathan Masuka. Didn't hurt Edwards at all. 
Now, now look at the right hand of Osuku. Had it up higher for a moment there, John. But when he when he throws something, naturally that right hand drops. Yeah. Because uh, right now he's got it, he's got it right there. Yeah, you can see, watch the rhythm with his hands. When his left hand paws out, his right hand starts to come down. Yeah. These are the tells. Like playing poker, everyone's got a tell. It just happens. Nice straight left hand again. That speed of Fabian Edwards on that hand, and it's just touching the mark time after time. When you have a tell and, a, and your opponent reads that tell, you've got to either change it or you're going to start to eat it because of it. Sometimes that tell is how you eat your cookies. <laughs> it is. And I knew you would kick that one. Oh. Give the man his money. <laughs> you know, people are looking and, and some people are not happy that Fabian is not opening up more. There's no reason to. There's that high head kick that we were talking about. And that's what his timing, he's watching those hands and he's seeing that hand when it's starting to come. He reaches out, sees the hand drop and brings that kick up. Pasuko is tough, man. I, I, he can take a shot because he's been hit with some stiff left hands. He's been hit with big kicks up high, and he just keeps marching forward. This is a strong young man. And John, I was just gonna make the comment that Fabian Edwards isn't opening up more because he respects his opponent and his opponent's striking in Jonathan Bosuku. Oh, absolutely. You could tell off of the leg kick he had how heavy that kick was. He was like, oh, yeah, he felt it. He knows what he's in against. SSE Arena Wembley, Wembley, London, England. Third and final round. Fabian Edwards in the red, Jonathan Bosuku in the blue. Up to love? Up to love, no doubt about it. It's not, you know, not that Jonathan Bosuku is not trying to do good things in this fight. He's just getting hit with stiff, clean shots, and he's unable to respond with ones to counter. Osuku riding a five fight win streak, winner of seven of his last eight. Three of his last four fights have gone to the judges, but given the fact he's on a five fight win streak, I can figure out that he won those decisions. <laughs> Sharp as a marble. <laughs> you know, it, it's you can look and you it reminds me. Posuko has that Pedro Hizzo leg. He's got heavy legs with his kicks. He doesn't utilize them enough. You got a guy like Fabian Edwards standing in front of you. Those leg kicks are gonna do a lot in keeping Fabian Edwards movement down to a minimum because as your leg gets hit, starts to fill with blood, it becomes heavy. I would have told him, hey, I want you to start attacking those legs. Go after it. Come inside. Stay to the outside. Hit the kick. You cannot sit there and just try to get into a boxing match with this guy. Because there certainly has not been any look towards the ground game here in this fight. Not by neither guy. Just over three minutes on the clock. 
third and final round. You can tell just by the motion of Fabian Edwards exactly what he wants to do, but he's not taking chances against the Super with the power. We welcome those joining us on Sky Sports. Mike Goldberg, Big John McCarthy inside the SSE Arena Wembley. Bonus coverage for you. Third and final round between Fabian Edwards, who is 7-0, and Jonathan Bosuku making his Bellator debut. Our two big fights for you on Sky Sports. Gallagher and Labiano next. And then Paul Semtex Daly and Eric Silva at 170 pounds. Jay Glazer, Chael Sonnen, Josh Thompson, Jen Brown, all with us. Happy to be with you right here. Oh, he's a big shot. He's hurt back. There it is. Newcastle against Lee Chadwick. Fabian Edwards landed a head kick early and he said, but I rushed in. And it ended up going to a decision in which he won. But nicely done by what you said, a guy who can really take a shot. Boy, he can. He, I'll tell you what, Jonathan Bosuka's got a chin on him, man. His whiskers are strong because he got hit <laughs> with a shin right upside the head. You could see it stiffen him. He lost his balance. Fabian Edwards went after him, rushed in a little bit too quick, out of position, ended up falling down. Now you see Kosuko on top, but right now he doesn't have any type of attack. You see if Fabian Edwards get back to his feet. Final minute of our bonus coverage here on Sky Sports. The continuation of the fight for those who've been with us on Paramount Network. 45. For those just joining us, Big John McCarthy's unofficial scorecard has Fabian Edwards 10-9 in the first round, 10-9 in round number two. 30 seconds away from moving to 8-0. Going for that. Single leg takedown. Does his trip. Gets on top. We'll see if he tries to do anything special right here because he needs to posture and explode. Ten seconds. They go the distance. Here's some of the attacks of Fabian Edwards. Goes for this knee right here inside. Great idea. Gets into a clinch. It was that left hand. That was a difference maker. There's the high kick, and you see it hit Bosuko, but he took a lot of those. This is the one that stiffened him. Look at the legs stiffen up. Edwards rushes in, gets off balance, falls down. Suko ends up in top position, but it was Fabian Edwards who landed the heavy telling shots of this fight. There's no doubt he's going to walk away with his eighth victory in a row. Judges have uh, rendered their decision. Here's the voice, Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, having gone the distance, we'll go to your three judges at cage side. Brian Miner, John English, Ben Cartledge, all three scored exactly the same, 30 to 27 for the winner by unanimous decision. Fabian, the assassin, Edwards. 4-0.
in Bellator, 8-0 in his mixed martial arts career. Another victory for Birmingham's assassin, Fabian Edwards. The phony war, which has been a noisy phony war, is over. Shipman in the blue gloves, Edwards in the red. Who is going to come out on top here? You told me yesterday, Josh, that often with these big grudge matches, the first round can be quiet as they just try and feel each other out. What Shipman did there, he didn't. He knew he wasn't going to throw anything, but he changed his stance and he kind of tracked out for a little bit, but always stayed right outside of range. Made Fabian react. Shipman has given time, everything time, time. to this sport, and he's just given everything there to Edwards. Into the cup it went. It just grazed it. Yeah, it grazed it. Yeah, it grazed it. Got five minutes if he wants. He has to make sure he's right. There it is. Kind of just skimmed up the front of it, went up into the gut. We can reset and we can start again. Shipman falling short there with that right hand. Uh, be careful of that high right kick. I have that high left kick on me by uh, Fabian. Keep those knees clean, gents. Strength there and power from Shipman. First chance they really had to feel each other's strength. But I sat with Fabian in the, in the fighter interviews. He talked about how everyone had talked to him and told him how strong he was. But one of his teammates had fought Shipman and said, look, he's strong, but he's not like something that's overwhelmingly strong. He's like, Fabian, when I deal with you and I train with you, he's like, you're just as strong. He's like, well, you're not a stiff strong, you flow. So there's a difference in style of when guys are strong. Sometimes they're really stiff and they're physically strong, and there's guys that are strong in the positions they need to be strong in. Player growing up, Shipman. Getting a strength in that sport. Given so much to this sport. Living in a van outside the gym for a while. This is not the range that Shipman wants to be in. He either wants to be all the way in or all the way out. He can't stay in that kicking range. Good left hook there from Edwards. Such a smooth move. In the cage, Fabian Edwards. Fights like this either have, the, have your young talent rise to the top. That cream will rise to the top. Fabian Edwards right now looks like he's starting to rise. He knows that Shipman's a tough opponent. He knows there's more at any moment Shipman can get him down, take him down, or start to do something that intentionally he can lose the fight. And a good smooth start this from Edwards. Just a little pouring right hand there from Shipman. Big shot right there by Shipman. Do you feel that Shipman needs, even at this early stage, just a little confidence boost? That right hand might have been it. Good left hand there, though, from Fabian Edwards. To a body lock or get low on the legs. Nice work by Fabian though, trying to turn the tide a little bit, threaten to take down himself. That loss against Marcelo Van Steen has really hurt Shipman, but it took a while to reset him. Get himself focused. Mark, are we getting he was having a really good things? fight in that fight up until that moment. He just relaxed, made a mistake, and yeah. it cost him. Business. Yeah, in some ways those defeats are harder to take than others, aren't they? When I think he should have come out with a win. Right. Somebody 
that's on the Fabian bandwagon. Cam, okay, someone that believes in all the talent and all of his ability. But moments like this is where I feel he gives up ground sometimes. He's so relaxed and so calm in moments where he needs to focus on getting off of that fence because in a three-round fight, you don't have minutes and seconds to lose sitting with your back against the fence. Still part of the shipment plan as well. He's watched plenty of Fabian Edwards trying to come up with a solution to try and break it down. It's a good kick there from Edwards. Yeah. And then really good combination too. Nice go little uppercut right hook by uh, Fabian. He's doing a good job of making Shipman have to react off of the pressure. Shipman did well there to slip that left hand. Close opening round. And you can do the full Both audio as well. Here he is in it. Here's 15 on it. Page, along with Big Nasty. Ten on it. Nine, eight, seven. Six, I was told five, yesterday it's big four, nasty. Three, two, oh, it's two, one. Nasty. No, I said nasty. Oh, it's nasty. It's got an R in it. It's nasty. That's right. It's got an R in it. We had a conversation about it yesterday, Josh. 20 minutes of my life, I'm not getting back, so let's just call it big nasty and be done with it. More serious note. Mike Shipman, Edwards, who would you give it the opening round to? Okay. I would probably give it to Shipman. It's a close round. It's one of those rounds. He, I thought Fabian landed the cleaners. There was two times where he landed the cleaner shots, but I don't know if two shots says enough for Shipman's pressure, Shipman pressing against the fence. I mean, it, it was a close round. Is it going to be one of those fights? Very hard to score. Imagine if this ended up being controversial. With all the talk there's been. Edwards needs to get himself out of this position. I like that sense of urgency right there that he tried to show. Focus on getting his back off the fence. I believe that was something his brother said in the corner to him, Leon Edwards. Oh, my fingers, right? Just keep trying. Don't hook in the glove. Don't hook in the glove. Left. Shimon's got his hands locked underneath the butt. That normally means it's going to be a lot easier for him to get to that takedown. He's going to scoop him up and start to pull him back. You see the technique of Fabian. Nice work. A really good takedown defense there from Fabian Edwards. Shipman switched from the double to the single leg, pulled him away from the fence. He's hitting that switch, though, baby, was. Oh, nice work. Go ahead. He's on the neck. Oh, head popped up by Shipman. Baby needs to get those feet on the hips and start trying to make space to get back up to his feet. He goes toes flat, baby, and keep the feet flat. It's been hard work, but Shipman has finally got into some kind of position that he wanted here. Fabian Edwards on the bottom at the moment, unbeaten. One of the stars of Bellator this year, in Europe anyway. Shipman is so tough, so seasoned. Shipman. It's not where Fabian wants to be. 
Try to shuck the head by, get to the back. Wasn't able to do it. Ten and five from Wembley. Final couple of minutes Ten of five round two. Five. You see the smile on Shipman's face. This is exactly where he wants to be. He just wants to be hanging out, making Fabian carry his weight. Grind him down, trying to tire him out. Well, what Chip is trying to set up, he's trying to set up that, that Darce choke or that Anaconda. When he gets there, he's on that front choke. He's going to try to hook the leg if he can put his arm all the way through. Maybe he needs to fight the hands and start trying to clear his head and stand back up to his feet. This is a problem that I think a lot of the, the European fighters have. They need to understand the ref's not going to stand you up here. And he was looking for that, wasn't he? But well, Chip is looking for a submission, so the ref's not going to stand you up there. Kind of fun, I think. On a minute of this second round, it's going Shipman's way at the moment, narrowly. Take out of Edwards. Edwards trying to stalk him at the moment. We need that sense of urgency right now. Good knee though from Shipman. Yeah, the nice little overhand left also too by Fabian. They're both landing at the same time there. Shipman with the left hook and Edwards with a straight left. in this fight is the kicks. Saw a couple head kicks in the first round, but I would have thought he would have went to the light kicks early in the fight. Channel 5 from Wembley. You said round one narrowly to Shipman. Round two. It could be 1-1, one, one, though. It really could be 1-1. One, one. Put your hands together, hands and legs together. Yeah, you might be able to get on. I'm very, very accomplished. They're on it. 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 They're on but whatever it is, you've got to put your hands and your kicks together because we haven't seen a lot of that from, from Fabian. He's fighting the fight that he needs to fight. Shipman is to win this yeah, what's fight. the number? And as Josh predicted, he's been predicting it all week, really. The grudge fight, the fireworks fight has not caught fire yet we have five minutes left for it to do so it's been interesting don't get me wrong fascinating but it hasn't caught fire in the way it did for example at the way but this is what i want to see i want to see a sense of urgency for fabian Two this is what I want to see. fabian edwards this is the fabian edwards i think i believe that we have on our hands but we just got to see it from him he's decided to come out and take some risks now try and impose himself at his style of shipment Shipman reacts very well. Nicely done. Got to the takedown. Baby needs to work on trying to get up to his feet, not trying to work on the submissions or the sweeps. He needs to work on trying to get back to his feet as fast as possible. Kind of switches hips out, put his back flat to the, to the cage so he can start pushing on the head and trying to get one leg free so he can get the knee up. Shipman's happy where he is at the moment. He's got to shift his hips a little bit so he can clear one leg out. If he can clear one leg out, then he can start working his way back up. The best thing for him to do is butt scoot his butt away so he can clear one of his knees. There you go. Now he's got to start getting back up. Post it on his right hand. Clocks against that there there. he's got to get out of this. Hip escape out and start getting to his knees. There you go. 
over those up kicks that he so dramatically finished in Birmingham with. Shipman came in looking for the submission. The speed on the scrambles belongs to Fabian. He just needs to just make sure he causes the scrambles more often. And he's out for pressure now. I think he, th I think he thinks either it's 1-1 and he needs to win this round or he thinks he's down. But I like this level of intensity by him. that left uppercut and then the kick from Edwards. Don't chase, all he's got to do is just cut the cage off and then open up, touch, touch, touch. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, it'll end, yeah, it won't be long. They've only got two and a half minutes. You see that a little bit like how Paul Daly does it. He'll touch you and touch you and then he'll throw big punches. Man, and then he'll go back to touch, touch and then big punches. He's trying to stalk him here, Edwards. Nice combination right there. Best combination of the fight right there from Edwards. Edwards wins this final round definitively that it might yet be enough here. Some of the action here, Josh. Nice uppercut there. That kind of stunned two, Shipman a little bit. Got him wobbled a little bit. Yeah. Fabian knew it. That's why he jumped right back at him right away. Hit him with a nice elbow in, inside blue. the clinch. None of those really landed all that much, but he was able to kind of pummel himself blue. back inside. I liked what he did right there. He put his head right up underneath Shipman's let's chin. Let's Made it hard for him to get it on the single let's on the double leg. Let's go. Hands up. Hands up. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards. Judge Torelli scores about 29-28, Shipman. Judge D'Amato scores about 29-28, Edwards. And Judge Cardinich scores about 30-27 in favor of your winner by split decision, Fabian Twenty-seven on one of the scorecards. 
He and his team have leapt out of the cage to celebrate, leaving Josh waiting for his interview in the cage. Poor Mike Shipman, someone had to lose, and at least there's a little fist bump between the two of them. Fighter, fighter, fight! Well, you can reach out and touch the tension in this arena now. There's a legend in the house, but there's also a very, very popular British fighter up against it. <laughs> Who can impose their will on the other early? Edwards determined not to leave anything in there. Determined not to take his foot off the gas. But they're both counter-strikers, and that makes this opening particularly interesting. It does, because it, it, this could be one where they both wait. But Fabian Edwards talked about it, he goes, I know I can't wait, I have to go after him. I have to make him make mistakes, which is not easy to do. Leona Machida doesn't make a lot of mistakes, but he's right in the fact that he cannot wait. Trying to draw something out of Machida here, but might as well get the money in the bank with those leg kicks. They're both doing that, though. What you don't want to do against Lyoto if you're Fabian Edwards is overextend. Don't all of a sudden get frustrated and jump into something. That's when he takes big advantages in the fight. Everything that we're seeing right now out of Fabian Edwards is exactly the way he should fight. Clean, everything's tight, crisp. Either looking for that kick as the action just starts to heat up here. Stand up with fascination. We watched him clinch, and now we watched him go to the ground. Edwards springing back to his feet. Very nice job of Fabian Edwards getting back, and a beautiful left elbow on the exit. See, that's the kind of thing that you're looking for in this fight. Don't be the guy that is sitting there just trying to get away. I want to make him pay for trying to take me down, and that's what Fabian Edwards did. Never. Died away from a challenge, Machida. Then he chose to fight Ryan Bader because he's the top guy and he wanted the challenge. Perfect goal for him would be Gegard Mousasi again. He's had two fights against Gegard Mousasi. They split those, so that trilogy is there. If you go, and this is where you're looking at it, look at the who's who that Leota Machida has faced off against. He has gone against everyone you can think of. Sassy, Beta Couture, Henderson, Sonnen. The list just goes on and on. Knockout win against Randy Couture. So many fights with Shad Evans. Oh, oh Edwards! He earned it. He's got it. Outstanding. The team is in massive trouble. Edwards! That's what you win. Win his life. Edwards with a long These are the moments that you look for that are opportunities for you to face a legend. And you got to go out there and do your thing. Fabian Edwards went out there and fought a beautiful fight. He was aggressive. He was offensive. And that's why he got that win. And now there is concern. And Fabian Edwards is concerned as well. Take a look at what occurs here. That elbow again. That elbow strike that we talked about on the exit, he did it again, and that's what started the fall of Leota Machida. He followed it up. Watch the elbow. He gets legs, can't hold him up. The left hand lands. One shot there, and he's out. Get, look at the pop on that elbow strike. We talk about landing strikes on the exit. A huge difference in fights, Fabian Edwards made a point of doing it every time. A huge win.
for the assassin Fabian Edwards. And the reaction told you everything. The cheetah's okay, and that's good to see. He's back up on his stool. But the reaction there from Fabian Edwards, who is not given to huge emotion, just realized in that split second what it would mean. Two consecutive defeats, and then he produces that. And remember, it's not just a win. That's a highlight real win against the legend of the sport. Barely put a foot wrong, Fabian Edwards. And he gets the respect of Machida as well. Great to see him up and on his feet. Number two right middleweight in Bellator. Looking for the win and they push him towards Johnny Evelyn in that world title. It's been interesting about the week is that we have heard a ton from Charlie Ward, from his coaches, about how lean he is, how consistent he's been. How he's, but we haven't heard much from Charlie Ward. He has not been around, which is pretty unusual. Uh, big fight. Uh, you know, Charlie, normally he'll talk and he'll, he'll give you great lines. This one, he just said, I trained hard. I worked my ass off. I'm going to prove to everyone I belong. So, nice job. There is a great advantage to being painted in the storyline as that other guy. And everybody has moved on to what they think might happen next. You could come in and kick their sandcastle down. One of the things is if you're looking right now, take a look at just the position of Fabian Edwards and how he has taken that basic center of the cage and he's making it to where Charlie's the one on the outside. He's got a long distance if he wants to get him to the cage. Just off the bat, David is showing you good fight IQ, being smart about where he's at and how he's going to attack Charlie. Didn't come out normally, maybe super fast starter. Didn't come out fast at all. He's taking his time. He knows what's on the line here with this win. No one is suggesting it was peak career Loyola Machida that Fabian Edwards knocked out. But when you consider who he had been in with and who couldn't do what Fabian Edwards did, there's no other way to spin that. It's an ultra impressive. And honestly, how easily he did it, and the way he did it starting off with the elbow, just shows a full range of attacks. Fabian Edwards, he's dangerous everywhere. Dangerous in the clinch, definitely dangerous on the outside with his speed and his kicks. Uh, first round. Jack Jones can do it. Rampage can do it. And he just missed that straight right hand. Not much. Uh, he did not. Oh, good shot. Serious trouble, he was hurt with that one. Fabian should not accept the position here. Fabian should start to work, get his feet on the hips, start to work Charlie Ward. Oh, Charlie's still buzzed, there's no doubt about it. He got hurt back. That could not have come at a better time for Charlie Ward. He can regain his sense of that head kick. Charlie Ward has been stopped since it's been five years. Uh, 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 two losses to split decision loss to Van Stinas. And a decision loss to Austin Van This is exactly what Charlie Ward wanted. Get Fabian Edwards to the 
ground and just wear on him. Always fast up. Sorry, Johnny. You're the coaching. He's fascinating. Because <laughs> you could be thinking one thing, and they have trained something differently, they have drilled differently. Once he finally got dug in that underhook, he got to his side, he was able to work his way back to his feet. Looked to be really turning heavily Fabian Edwards' way, and then he lost his footing on that second head kick attempt. That turned it around a little bit. Through one. This is what started the whole thing off, that beautiful kick right to the right side of Charlie Ward's head. He was, he was on some slippery stilts right there. But Charlie, right at the end of the round, you saw that beautiful right hand. It did touch the chin of Fabian. Did not have quite the same effect. You ever have coaches that were trying to get 65 seconds out of 60? <laughs> more, than that. more than that. Are we ready? Charlie, ready? Fight! I'll be no surprise now. Fabian Edwards was in some precarious spots late in the round, but he took one shot, that's about it. That's it. You know, when they were on the ground. Wrestling, defensive wrestling, offensive wrestling is taking Charlie down. That's something Charlie did not expect from Fabian Edwards. And not only is he down, he's almost in the mouth. Tell you what, if that was in the middle of the cage, he would have been able to pass. So, he didn't have room. That's beautiful. Still needs to move. There you go. Don't settle for the position. Nice job by Charlie to get back to his seat. Beautiful mat return. The evolution of Fabian Edwards here in this last 25-30 seconds. Beautiful job by Fabian to get his hooks in. Felt to get a little bit high, shook him down. Well, that escalated quickly. Neutral, neutral, the groin shots. Okay. You've got some time if you need it. A shot to the cup along the fence is nothing new. You generally don't hear that conversation Keep going the knees clean. It was an accident. That's exactly it. Accident. It's not like, an accident. Well, one part of that is something we see all the time. The other part, not so much. Quite so much. You good? You ready to fight? Maybe oh, Edwards, he is glaring a hole right through Blake Grace. Nah, nah, it was an accident. Hey, I didn't even see it happen. It's all good. Here we go. We ready? Come in, fight! Hey, I didn't even see it happen. Those kind of big lunging attempts. He, he had two things. Fabian Edwards trying to stay safe, changes levels. 
job with the head position by Charlie. It's been a good, there are some good things here positionally for Charlie Ward. But he hasn't really done too much. He's taking some. drive those legs through. Don't let Charlie stay in that position. Great job by Charlie to fight his way out. Trying to, like, trying to flatten out an elephant. But all of that has gone into it. Back to full out quickly, and that allowed another quick elbow to get in. This is what happens when you start to use power. Charlie's got power, but when you use power over and over, it empties your tank, you get tired. Use power from there. Nice side choke looking here. Maybe never tried to it. Good positioning by the knee, but he needs to drop the hips down. Dropping the hips will make it work a lot tighter. Like trying to fight it off. Neon Belly trying to decide which way to go with it. I'd really like to see him drop that knee off of the belly, onto the side, and drop his hips down. That's the reason it didn't work. There's too much space there. That was a great scramble to keep this round safely in the bank. That was what you see after any scrape in a pub in Dublin. I'll buy you a pipe. Exactly right. That's exactly what that was. Here you see when Fabian Edwards got that bout the second time. Look at the elbows right away start. Heavy shots. Those are landing clean. You see Charlie trying to block with the arm. Elbow in the stand up position gets to the back. Beautiful elbow again, but that lost balance. Then waited for Charlie, tried to land the up kick, didn't happen. What does the tank have left in it? For this third round, it is the real question. Charlie has put a lot of, he put a lot out in the second round. But I've never seen Charlie actually look so composed during the fight and so good as far as he has used a lot of energy and is still ready to go. You ready? You ready? Fight! He has been largely in this fight what he says he's going to be, but he's facing some younger, faster, more athletic. Not much question through two. No, I don't think there's any, any doubt who's going to win. But Charlie's made a fight of it. Every time Fabian gets a position and does something to think, oh, this could be it, Charlie's been fighting his way out of it. You've got to really be impressed by it. Takedowns were easy, and this one was too. Right in the mouth. Right in the mouth. And now 
this moment. All that time that you saw Charlie using that power to be able to get himself out, does he still have that in it? Does he have enough gas to use that power? Nice S mount, you see that foot up towards the hips. That's a nice use of the position by Fabian Edwards. Now he's driving, hooks in, and he's got those hips flattened out. Right now, Charlie's kind of crunching down on the gloves and the hands of Fabian. Once Fabian's able to pull out, those hips are flat. That's a big problem. That is a big problem. You can see Fabian trying to work those hands free. Charlie's doing nothing as far as he's holding on for everything he has to keep those exactly where they're at. He's defending, but he's down a couple of touchdowns, so that's not going to help. Such a smart fight fought by Fabian Edwards. Turns him, got the body lock. Clock on his, on his side, position is on his side. When Fabian Edwards came on the balance tour, he's like, look, everyone, he's a striker. There's a way to beat him. you got to take him to ground. Look what he's working on now. He is systematically developing a ground game, making himself better in all aspects of the sport. That's what a winner does. Charlie really stuck with his figure four. Charlie needs to turn towards his left side. He needs to put Fabian's foot onto the ground to make it to where he can't squeeze so much and he can possibly turn inside of it. He's not looking good right now. It's not so much that it's under his chin, but it's cutting off just the airflow through his mouth. Go through his nose, but he's just putting up with pressure. Fabian Edwards incrementally improving his position, moving closer to the finish line. This has been a master class in a lot of ways. Uh, now he's going for the choke. I asked him if he felt he needed to finish the fight. He needed one of those spectacular finishes. He said, I need to win. I need to win. And I'm going to win impressively. You start taking chances against a guy like Charlie Ward. Your title shot will fade away. Instead, this has been a dominant performance. You want to do an ass bitch, are you? You live, bitch. Look at your height. Look at your fucking holding on. Look at you in the world. Look at you in the fucking world. Yeah. That's what happens inside the cage all the time. Most people don't hear it. But that's going on. When you dream of someone whispering sweet nothings in your ears, this is not what you have in mind. Well, it all just depends on your attitude, I suppose. Or what you were born to do. Or your life. Or your life. Or your life. No drone, no feature. Just get on with it. Easy, easy, easy. They may be sharing a pint later, and now they share a moment. Get up, Charlie, get up, I'm not saying it. Charlie, listen to me, I'm not saying it. Relax. Yeah, they don't speak kind to each other, do they? Okay. Yeah, yeah, you have me? You have me? Okay. Fight's over. Uh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. I'm just making it short, boys. Talk all you want. Okay, all right, they're good now. You're a headbutt, though. 
You can trade John Blake Rice to be a referee. You can't trade him for that. So the situation started. A lot of emotions in the fights. Well, I imagine you're going to be hearing that a lot on social media. That's going to be replayed over and over and over again. The fight and the conversation. But now the conversation can turn to Fabian Edwards and what is next. Is he one step closer to the championship dream that his brother realized? I'm sure by the end of the night they'll be texting to each other. Charlie Ward took some serious punishment. That head kick in the first round that was potentially very dangerous in this fight, but Edwards going for the second one fell down. That kind of turned the fight and prolonged it. Michael C. Williams will make this official. Ladies and gentlemen, for the decision will go now to your three judges at cage side. Your first, Jaron Vallel, scores the fight 29 to 28, while judges Brian Miner and Salvatore Diamato scores it 30-27. All have it for the winner by Hewton Hanamus decision. Fabian, the assassin, Edward. Came in ranked number two in the middleweight division. Now he has another quality win and a dominant win. Now with his new 